Well, today I've got a good word for you, and I've entitled my message, Looking Unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Especially verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Beloved, the Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of of the Lord. Our eyes are firmly on our Savior, firmly on Jesus. Hallelujah. And today we see our world in torment. We see our world uh, trying to find a solution to this COVID-19 virus. We see the effects of this pandemic, the, the fear. Who can they turn to? Where can they go? But um, today we face this pandemic together. And it's serious what's going on out there. But remember today, dearly beloved, that as serious as this pandemic is, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came to this earth, there was a condition that was even more desperate. He found man bound in sin, bound by Satan, with no escape, suffering under the hand of the devil. He found a world that was infected. And we look at how many people are infected. But let me tell you, when Jesus came, everyone was infected. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no medication for sin. There is no working your way out of sin. There is no escape for sin. There is no way to break the curse of sin. It took a supernatural intervention. Yes, my friend, it took a supernatural Jesus to bring a deliverance that would set the whole world free. Think of it. One man who delivered the whole world from the power of sin for whosoever will call on his name. Hallelujah. There's no way for the world to break free of the curses of sickness, of disease, of poverty, of all the ills that we see around us in this world. Of the ills that is the heart of man, murder, theft, lying, uh, you know, all just looking after yourself at the expense of others. All these things are buried deep in the heart of man. And most of us today are in this lockdown together and we all face problems. We all don't know exactly what the future holds. But friend, we know who holds the future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I've come to tell you today and bring this message to you, looking unto Jesus. Come on, I want you to say that in your home. Looking unto Jesus. That's right. Looking to Him. Because He loves you so much. He loves us. He came to this world. Nobody forced Him. When the Father said, who will go for us and whom shall I send? Jesus said, here am I. Send me. He came because he loved you and he loved me. Hallelujah. He came with so much love. The Bible says he laid aside his majesty. He left his throne of glory. He left all his heavenly privilege. Left it behind. And we can read of that in Philippians 2 and verse 6. Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, Verse 7, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearances of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. That's how important you are to him. 
he laid aside all that he had. He left his throne of glory. He considered you of more worth than all that he had. He left it behind. He sacrificed it. Hallelujah. That, I don't know about you, but that blows my mind that he loved us more than all his glory, than all that he had, than the riches, the honor. And he placed us above his possessions. What an incredible truth that when we come to Jesus, we are more important to him than anything. He holds nothing more dear than his love for you. Hallelujah. Oh, what depth of love, what boundless love Jesus has for you and for me. Hallelujah. And how can it be? I think about that. How can it be that this Lord of glory counted me of so much value that he places me first? If I approach his throne, I know that everything that is surrounding him is nothing to him. I am important to him. He loves you today. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. How can we fathom such love? Blessed be the name of Jesus. As we were thinking about this and praying about this, and uh, Sister Patricia and I were sitting here, just, it just overwhelmed us how much Jesus loves us. And the tears started sweeping down her face. And friend, if we just think about this, God relates to you in the realm of love. He doesn't relate to us theologically, doctrinally. All those things are important because through them we know Him. But He relates to us out of love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if He loved us so much, if He withheld nothing from us, then today, friend, I want to say to you, He is the author and He is the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Romans 8 verse 31. We're going to talk about how he withheld nothing because of his passion for us, because of his love for you. Turn there with me in Romans 8 verse 31. Uh, Pat, will you bring me my cloth? It's over there, please. Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall we say, thank you, Patricia, to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Oh, my friend, let the love of God envelop you right where you are. Do you realize how important you are? Come on, why don't you wrap your arms around you? Just give yourself a hug on behalf of Jesus and say, really, really loves me. Hallelujah. And then you are home. You can easily turn to your, to your family right next to you. Come on, give them a big hug and tell them God truly loves you. <laughs> Amen. What a joy to know that Jesus loves us. He didn't leave us in sin, but he chose us. He laid aside everything for you. And for me. And so today I want you to hear this that Jesus loves you so much, He is the author and the finisher of your faith. When I think about Him being the author, He's the one that, uh, that wrote the story of faith, that wrote the story of your salvation, that wrote the story of your inheritance and the blessings and all that would come to you. He authorized it. And then not only did he authorize that, so in doing that, he authorized you and I to be partakers of his blessings, of his promises, of his miracles for you to receive today. Hallelujah. He says, I authorize you today to believe me. You see, sometimes people think, what can I believe God for right now? Things are hard. Things are tough. Things look impossible. It's, it's a bad situation. But let me tell you, right in your situation, despite the conditions you're in, Jesus authorizes you to believe him for a miracle. Hallelujah. 
for a breakthrough according to all that he has prepared for you glory to god the devil comes john 10 verse 10 to steal to kill destroy but i have come hallelujah i have come that you might have life and life more abundantly glory to god and so jesus says to you today believe i authorize you to believe me for a miracle I authorize you to believe me for a supernatural intervention. If you say, Jesus, what, what, are, you, what are you thinking right now? What are you, he is saying, I'm authorizing you right in your situation to believe me. Glory to God for a miracle. Hallelujah. To receive what I have prepared for you. My miracle provision, my miracle protection, my miracle interventions. Glory to God. You, he authorizes you to believe him for an open door. He authorizes you to believe him for the glory of God to fill your house, for blessing, for favor, for provision, for health. That's what Jesus is doing for you and I. He authorizes us to believe today that it's a new season, that the shaking that's happening in the world is going to turn for our good, that with the shaking is going to be new opportunities come. With the shaking, those who hold and withheld will no longer to be able to withheld, but the glory of God is about to be released in the church. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm reading out of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Come on, I want you to say this with me today. I'm coming out of this smelling like a rose. <laughs> I'm coming out of this smelling like a rose. Glory to God. Is it time to despair? Is this time to give up hope? Is this time to go sit in a corner? Is this, is this the time to think, well, maybe uh, this is just going to be my lot? No, my friend. Is there a deliverer? Yes. Is there a redeemer? Yes. Is Jesus authorizing me today in my situation and actually saying to me, come on. I authorize you to believe me for a miracle. I authorize you to sow a seed of faith, to speak a word of faith. I authorize you to pray and to ask big because I am the God of the miraculous. Hallelujah. I authorize you today. Glory to God. And you know, sometimes we talk like this. People think, well, you know, Pastor Johnny, don't you know what's going on? Don't you realize what's busy happening? Yes, my friend, I do. But I also remember this, that God doesn't treat the just with the unjust. He doesn't judge and condemn us with the world. We, we are different. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We belong to him. We've got a different inheritance. He's got a different future plan for you. No matter what happens to us, thousand falls on your left, ten thousand falls on your right, but nothing shall come near us. Glory to God. I want you to say this with me today. My master Jesus, come on, say it, has authorized me today to believe for a miracle. Oh, 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 oh. glory, glory. <laughs> he has authorized me to believe him for a miracle. Friend, aren't you glad that God sent his son Jesus? Aren't you glad that God didn't send a uh, angel he didn't send a bank manager he didn't send a politician he doesn't didn't send a doctor he sent his only son jesus of nazareth with power with authority with compassion and love for you and me because we belong to him he sent jesus who said only believe come on i thank god lift your hands where you are and say, thank you, Jesus. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So listen, my friend, whatever you do, don't get amongst the pessimistic. Don't get amongst the unbelievers. Don't get amongst those who are, who are negative. Don't leave the fellowship of the saints. Stay in fellowship. Stay close. 
you know, we started this group called DCC Family Chat, and I trust that all of you are on that. If you're not, come on, phone us. Let's get you on that group. I every day encourage you. I every day I give a, a great message, and it's a, a, it's a message called, It's a Beautiful Day. I tell you, what a day to start in a fellowship, to start in the faith, to stand together, to receive that message. It's so glorious that we can fellowship. Don't get out of fellowship. Don't get drawn out. Uh, I remember what Pastor Fred used to often say. The banana that leaves the bunch gets peeled. Hallelujah. Don't become a peeled banana. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not going to get peeled. I'm going to stay in the bunch. I'm going to stay in the fellowship. I'm going to stay amongst the believers. Hallelujah. So, you know, we look what's happening. Listen, I understand. I know things can get very difficult. Many of, us, many of us are facing very difficult circumstances, and we're all in different situations. There's some real problems out there. There's the problem of COVID-19 and the fear that some people have that, they are gonna, that, that they're going to get sick. There's the problem of isolation. I don't know about you, but I am tired of isolation. Oh, it's wonderful to be able to communicate through WhatsApp and to see what people are doing on Facebook and to get messages and phone. Oh, that's wonderful. But I want to get out here. I want somebody with skin on. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to hug the, the, the saints. I want to shake hands with believers. I want to lay hands on the sick. I want the fellowship. And many of you, this isolation is hard on us. Some of us are even alone in our homes. You, your family is not with you. And uh, how we miss church, how we miss fellowship, how we miss those precious moments together, but God's going to make a way for us. Amen. And of course, there's the problem of the economy. And many of you don't know what's going to happen with the economy. Some people are, are fearing they're going to lose their jobs. Some people don't know what's going to happen in their businesses. But some fear losing their car or their home. Listen, this thing is real. Amen. It's real. But I want to tell you, Jesus is real. And that's why God gave me this message. And I can sense his anointing in your home where you are. I can sense his miracle power where you are. And that's why he gave me this message for you. Jesus says, I am the author and the finisher of your faith. He's authorizing you today to believe him, to believe and receive from him. Hallelujah. In every situation, whatever your situation, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing of the all-sufficient one, of El Shaddai in your home, the God that is more than enough. Hallelujah. Fill your home. Let the glory of God touch your home. Thank you, Father, that you authorize. Now, come on, just lift your hands, believe God, receive from him. Lord, you authorize me today to believe you for a miracle, for a supernatural intervention. And so today, by faith, I say of the church that this is the day of miracles. This is the day that the Lord has made. Father, thank you now for your anointing. Oh man, I sense the glory of God looking unto Jesus, dearly beloved, the author, the finisher. And now, Lord, as you've authorized us to believe, you finish the work. You complete the faith of the saints. You intervene. Thank you now. I release miracles, signs, and wonders in every home. Hallelujah. I release the glory of God as he authorizes you. Whatever you face from this day, remember, he has authorized you to believe him for a miracle. Now, Lord, I bless your home. I bless the saints. I release the might of your anointing in their lives. And we authorize a miracle in Jesus' name. I command the blessing. 
We release the breakthrough. And we thank you for manifesting your glory in these homes in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Dearly beloved, God loves you. He's passionate about you. Remember today, he's calling on you to call on him. Call on Jesus and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. So I bless you. Thank you now. Wonderful, miracle, working God who authorizes us to believe by showing us your promises, showing us what you've done for us, showing us, oh God, your precious inheritance that we have. So I bless every home. I bless every home with favor, with provision, with health, with protection, with strength, with interventions, my God. I thank you for lining things up supernaturally in every home in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, can you shout amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love you. We look forward to being together again soon, dearly beloved. And may the Lord bless you and bless your home and strengthen you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.